God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Second Presbyterian Church of Charleston, where in the name of Jesus, we welcome everyone. It's true. If you aren't aware of or you don't receive our updates and our snapshots of opportunities, I invite you to go to the website, 2ndpc.org, sign up, see what's happening through this church for the realm of God. Now, I know it seems like there's a church on every corner in Charleston, but if you're looking for a place where you'll be known, you'll be nurtured, where you can make a difference for the kingdom of God and where questions are welcomed, then I invite you to spend some time with the Second Church community. Check out the website. Contact us for small groups that are getting up, uh, Bible and book studies for all ages and stages in life, children's ministry, youth. Uh, last week was World Communion Sunday, and the Presbyterian Church takes up an offering, the Peace and Global Witness Offering. This offering supports work for peacemaking and reconciliation done by Presbyterians across the globe in our Presbytery, the Synod, and in our Charleston area. As you contribute online to the work of the realm of God through the Second Presbyterian Church online, you'll see a way to support this special ministry as well, or mail it in. In these days, as the nature of our relating to each other and to the world is so different, try here. Help us create places and, ident and identify points of contact. Join us as we navigate these curious and uncertain times as followers of Jesus. Now, we had hoped to gather this Sunday in the park, but the forecast was ominous. So we're excited to return to the sanctuary next week, October 18th. We'll be sending information with the proper protocols that we'll observe. And now, will you join me in the call to worship? God is good. God's God steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks for God's works. Rejoice in God always. Let us worship the God of peace and understanding. And so we dare to pray together the prayer our Savior taught those who would be his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess who we are, then our gracious God offers us a path back, back into right relationship. So let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Now hear this news. <laughs> Hear this good, good news that I proclaim to you today. God loves us with a love we cannot fathom, would not love us less for anything that we have done, and yet by God's very nature could not love us more. So, in, so for every heart that is truly repentant, the slate is clean. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now here's Ken with a word for the children. Hi kids, as always, I hope everyone is doing well and being nice and thoughtful. Last week we were talking about epistles and Paul. Remember, an epistle is like a letter written to a group of people, and Paul, he wrote a lot of them. Also remember, Paul was in house arrest, jail, when he wrote a lot about how to continue the story of Jesus, serve others, be kind to everyone, and to remember that God is with them all the time. Remember, he was in jail, and he was rejoicing about God and life. I always like it around Christmas when everybody is all happy and thankful. Well, 
Jesus didn't tell us to only be joyous around special days. He told us to be joyous and thankful every day. It would be so nice if everybody acted every day like they do at Christmas. So remember, the next time you're on the playground running at full speed, wind in your hair, smile on your face, be thankful. When things aren't going like you want, be thankful. God is with you and things will turn around. They will get better. If your friends aren't treating you like you want to be treated, give them time. Act nice. They'll come around. So, will you pray with me? Dear God, be with me. Give me the courage to do what I must do. Strengthen me and bless me. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Thank you, Ken, and Julia, and Clarissa. Now let us lean back, lean back into the everlasting arms of God. Let us pray. God of all time and God of this time, we are gathered in various places to praise you and to worship you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We thank you for your faithfulness, your constancy, your mercy, and your grace. Only through your power are we able to face the challenges in and of our time, the challenge to be true to you, to be your light, to be obedient, to welcome the challenges you place before us. And so in our prayers this day, O oh God, we ask for your help, your protection, and for your provision that we might be strong as a community of faith, true to your gospel, and faithful to your hope for us and for this world. Lord, we pray for those recovering from illness, from surgery. We pray for those given a timeline for life. Lord, we pray for those harmed and displaced by the fires and the storms. Lord God of mercy and of compassion, we ask for your protection for all those in harm's way. We ask for your comfort 
for those who grieve. May the people of the world who long for freedom know your blessing. And may any and all who would snuff the flame of hope know that you are a righteous God whose purpose will be fulfilled. Lord, may those who lead, lead in goodness and with wisdom. And as the headlines reveal the worst of your creatures, we cannot turn away from the trash talk. We cannot turn our backs on the needs of the other. We cannot, in our privilege, ignore the desperation of those facing isolation, hunger, eviction, and the danger to those charged with maintaining order. Lord, may your spirit breathe the breath of life and goodness and strength and love into your creatures. And may the world know your love through us and in your name. Amen. It was 1985 and a playful song about flirtation came out. It was called Who's Zoomin' Who by Aretha Franklin. Number one album. It was danceable. It was evocative. It made you smile. Well, 2020, 35 years later, if you're zooming now, you're more likely utilizing an indispensable internet platform. But thank heavens I can access my iTunes account and I can access my Second Presbyterian Zoom account. You see, music transports me, soothes me, enables me. It can be a healthy mood changer. And through Zoom, I'm able to see the expression of folks and smiles in that person that I can only detect in eyes above a mask. But you see, both, both allow me important moments for the navigation of these days, just when I think that the news can't get worse. A plot is revealed to overthrow Michigan and kidnap the governor. The Gulf Coast endures Hurricane Delta with piles of debris from the last storm still on the corner. And the pandemic continues to rage. So what are we to do? The Apostle Paul instructs us. The text is read by Elizabeth and Tim and Anna and Graham and Anna Beth, all the way from Wisconsin. Good morning, we're Tim and Elizabeth Killen and this is our daughter, Anna Beth, and we will be reading from Philippians 4. From a lake in Minnesota. Okay, therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Yodia and I plead with Sintichi to agree with, with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Thank you, folks. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, pour through me the words you would have us hear that will touch each of us at our point of need. Your words, Lord, not mine. And may our worship be worthy. Amen. Last week, we looked at Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Now the people at Philippi, they're aware of Paul's imprisonment. They've prayed for his release. They've sent gifts to supply his needs. Yeah, the, the people of Philippi and Paul, they have this mutual affection. But Paul is aware that there are some moving in who preach a faith based more on law than the grace and the mercy of, of Christ. And he's aware that there's some friction in the congregation and that some have even started to waver in their faith commitment. So last week, Paul preached. He said, you know, I know it's tough now, but, but good things are coming, but it's going to take focus. So leave whatever you've been carrying, whatever weighs you down or gets in the way, leave it where it is and should stay. Leave it behind and move ahead. Finish the race. Claim the prize that is yours to know Jesus. Stand firm, Paul says. 
So when we find ourselves, men and women, we find ourselves weary and, or flummoxed or, or wondering what might be the next step in our obedience here, in our work, or in our studies. Paul offers us practical advice. I love it, practical advice. I think that that's what we need, practical advice. Things that we can do knowing that we are loved. So Paul offers us through his pastoral affection and through his concern for the integrity of the gospel as revealed to him by Jesus, we're given instruction <clears throat> that we should choose to receive. Our scripture gives us four practical action steps this morning. First of all, rejoice. Really? Yeah. Rejoice. In everything, rejoice. In your weariness, in your <clears throat> exams, in your hardships, in your disappointments, in your, in your triumphs, in your occasional ease. Rejoice. Rejoice in the faithfulness of Jesus. That Jesus, God, is constant, is faithful, knows your discomfort, and has known danger and fear and hardship, and the sweetness of community, and the invigoration of challenge, and that Jesus will be with you in each moment of your life. So hold on. Hold on to the joy of the Christian life. Hold on to who and whose and how to live. Rejoice. And next, hold on to the character of Christ. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Now, the Greek that is used here has been translated a number of ways. Uh, patience, softness, modesty, forbearance, magnanimity, the willingness to meet someone halfway. All of this that we might be known to everyone, exhibiting the gentleness of Jesus. So when legalism doesn't work, let the grace of Christ be seen in you. So hold on to the, to the nearness of God. Know that God is not distant. The God whom we proclaim this day set aside divinity, set aside separateness, set aside privilege, and was birthed, born through blood and water just like us in the chill of winter with the sights and the sounds and the smells of the barn. The Lord God, whose very name means the one who saves, is not absent, but present. Emmanuel, God with us. So hold on to the joy of the Christian life. Let the grace of Christ be seen in you. Hold to the nearness of God. And Paul says to pray. Don't worry about it. Be actively engaged with God without worry, giving thanks, being specific. Knowing that your prayer, when the petition is within the purpose of God, it will be received. And what then? Well, don't let anything take your joy. Let me say that. Don't let anything take your joy. Let your behavior, your demeanor, reflect your confidence in Christ Jesus. Paul reminds those whom he loves that, that if you hold on, if you pray believing, you will know a peace. A confounding peace, a surprising peace, a peace beyond our logic, beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding that will be our guard. Keep safe our hearts and our minds. Now in the past you've heard me speak of Dr. Kirkland, an early mentor of mine. One of his finest sermons was titled, Attitude is Everything. And in it, he explored the convergence of science, psychology, and scripture. He was a master at weaving different threads into a tapestry of inspiration. <laughs> and though he loved science, he loved technology, his strength and his sweetness and his power lay in his knowledge and his use of Holy Scripture. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And from Isaiah, great peace as those whose minds are stayed on God. Men and women, we thought 2019 was bad. 2020 has been a challenge. But let us begin fresh today. Fresh today in the midst of the maelstrom. Zoom it. Fresh today with an attitude that seems like an opportunity each day. For the problems that linger, there is a solution, though we may not know it yet. But we stand firm. We hold on to our joy. We exhibit the gentleness and the mercy of our Savior. We claim and savor the presence of our God. And we pray with purpose and thanksgiving and clarity for those things that are of God. We will be joyful partners in the reclaiming of the realm that God created for us 
and called good. You know, worship has just begun. And as you go about your day, take the love of God, the dynamic mercy of Jesus, and be filled with the power of the Spirit that we know is holy. May it be in you, but may it be working through you all of your life. Amen.